Welcome to Politics, where we voice the opinion of the 48%. Good morning, Yera. I'm Romaina. After 40 years of collaboration and a sense of unity, I feel the media propaganda has influenced the mainstream perspective, and we as a nation were sold a lie. On the 23rd of June 2016, the public decided on the future of the UK and the European Union. By a small margin, or to be precise, 51.9% leave to 48.1% remain. I am keen, however, to understand and try to emphasise with the leavers viewpoint. So I plan to put my opinions aside and also to try and keep my mouth shut and to disguise my rage. Speaking of the leave campaign, March 29th was going to be their day of celebration as the triggering of Article 50 was going to happen. Did they believe that £350 million would actually go to the NHS? After all, it's what that big red bus said. Do they believe we'll be stronger out of the single market? Do they believe we'll still be able to make trade? These are the sort of questions I want to know the answer to. Brexit has made this country so divided it's like a bad video game with an impossible boss battle. I myself have now been on the People's Vote March three times. Now I don't want to get in trouble, but our campaign seems to be more diverse. Jon Snow got in trouble unnecessarily after he commented on the lack of black people at the pro-Brexit march. On the 1st of April 2019, his exact words were, I've never seen so many white people. In my personal opinion, he did nothing wrong. Because as much as I don't want to examine what they believe in, Brexit extremists, for some unknown reason, believe that leaving the EU will get rid of migrants, even though many migrants are not of European origin. Oh, sorry, I was just trying to take a break from all the drama. On March 29th, an extension was instead offered, and Brexit was now going to happen on April the 12th. I understand this topic can be confusing for some people, so let me try and explain it. On the one side, you have, well, I'm alright Jack, nothing bad ever happened in my day, despite the fact they're usually, they're usually old enough to remember the war and don't realise by saying the Empire did nothing wrong, they're being hypocrites because they weren't around when it was, and without realising that killed millions of innocent people. Then there is the other side who believe in a world without borders and only bridges, and to them, the Empire is just something out of the Star Wars movies. Hashtag glorious. To continue with this analogy, Nigel Farage is Jabba the Hutt, but instead of having a woman kept in chains, he has a bunch of men who look like an angry version of the Fat Controller marching. When Theresa May is a female version of Anakin Skywalker, who starts off on the good side, but saying she wants to... By saying she wants to remain. Things get a bit wobbly in the middle. Okay, she doesn't kill a load of younglings, but stick with me. She then goes up to the Sith and says, Is there any way to learn this power? To which the famous response is not from a Jedi. Except in this sense, the, she's gone to the entire House of Commons and said, Here's my deal, take it or leave it. Then says hypocritically, If you vote through my deal, I'll quit. If the Star Wars is anything to go by, Raj is going to end up being her brother and they'll end up with no limb. Okay, rant over. Time to hear from the other side before I'm accused of bias. On April the 12th, Brexit was delayed once again. To add insult to injury, the EU decided October the 31st, 2019 would be the day we leave, much to the dismay of Theresa May. I may not even dress, dress up this year because what could be scarier than reality at the moment? These are the questions I'd like you to think about. A full English breakfast or a continental breakfast? How do you feel about Brexit being delayed? What do you plan to do on October the 31st? What do you reckon on the likelihood of a cancelled Brexit is? Do you plan to leave the country within the next few months? Were you present on either of the marches? And why or why not? If there was enough a referendum, how would you vote this time? Can you see a compromise that would mean we would all we, we would both get along? How would Brexit affect your family? A nice French wine or a British brewed beer? Fish and chips or an authentic curry? 
the New European or the Daily Mail. Now, the female version of Anakin Skywalker, Theresa May, wanted Brexit to be delayed till the 30th of June. To add insult to injury, the vote that shouldn't have happened on the 23rd of June means the Brexit streamers would claim June as their month. In an ideal world, I have two options for t protecting myself against Brexit. One would be to buy a transit van, other vans are available, and convert it into a camper van. Or option two, which is slightly more dramatic, would be to make a micronation, in other words, build my own country. It may sound like I'm joking, but I've seriously been thinking over these things every day. Brexit, to me, is absolutely terrifying. Put it this way, if someone handed you a copy of Close Encounters of the Third Kind and a copy of a film called Brexit, Without knowing anything about Brexit and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, you would choose Close Encounters based on the fact the title sounds better. However, if you haven't heard of Brexit by now, one, how glorious your life must be, two, have you been living under a rock, and three, I'm glad you woke up. If you want to see a documentary about graffiti and accidentally clicked on this one, please watch my previous film. Right, now you've decided you're here deliberately, let's get on with it. Throughout the last couple of months, a lot has happened in terms of Brexit, so forgive me if I don't manage to capture everything. I liken the whole Brexit mishmash being described as the tectonic plates being disturbed and an earthquake being controlled by Theresa May, who is a Moses-like figure parting the earth in the wrong direction. People seem to forget if we had another ble refer bloody random, that one, it would be the third referendum, because how do you think we joined in the first place? Yet, in that hip, hip free love era called the 1970s, there was a vote to join the EU in the first place. It took them a while to say yes. Many young voters, such as myself, would say, you are too young to know about this, but just pop down to the Brands Museum and you'll see my evidence. Why would you get rid of something so glorious? Leave campaigners will say that the European Union gave us nothing despite the fact it funds the majority of Wales and the main argument, which is migrants, most of, many of them aren't even of European origin. In the controversial words of Michael Caine in the film King of Thieves, hey, don't you say nothing about the Poles. Have you ever tried to build a bloody patio about the Poles? Never mind an ode to joy, is it an ode to... Just Theresa May. Excuse me. Why the Leave campaign are listen why the Leave campaign are listening to a man whose face looks like a looks like the face of a Freddo, I will never understand. Never mind a man who mistakes his leaf blower for his hairdryer. And don't forget about the thin controller who's conducting the train to fascist land. But according to the Leave campaign we made our decision. Let's take a look at the statistics involved with this statement. According to the Financial Times, as of 2012, the top European locations for new inward investment projects with HQ operations was in the UK. 43% of them to be exact. So why do we want to lose this? I'll leave you to decide.